It's been a while, but it's back. We're playing some Warfighter, and this time in the Pacific. Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. Yes, we are playing Warfighter World War II, published by DVG, and I thought I'd do a Pacific mission for a change, as there doesn't appear to be very many videos of those on YouTube. So let's have a look at the mission and objective that our squad is going to be attempting. The mission chosen for our squad is Short Patrol, which uh, they're quite pleased about. Resources for this mission is 45, time 11 turns. The objective is five spaces away, and there will be no sort of loadout modifier for the player soldier. At the start of the first soldier turn, recon one location. That means we can look through the location deck and choose a location card and put it in our hand, which is quite handy. But we have to pay one extra for all retain and support costs. To be honest, I don't think we'll be using many retain and support cards, but we'll see. So that's our mission. Unfortunately, when the squad found out what their objective was, they weren't best pleased. They thought they were gonna do a quick short patrol, check the perimeter, and back. But they were told there was rumours of uh, some Japanese hiding in some nearby caves. So, yep, they've got to go and clear those caves. As you can see, it's isolated. And that means nothing can fire into this card, which makes sense. It's caves. We've got to be on site. We've got to have a, a soldier at least one soldier on that card, and we've got to eliminate the hostiles that are generated from it. Good thing is, reinforcements are none because what you've got in the caves is what you've got in the caves, and an entrance cost of three. So this is placed at space number five, and that is our mission and objective. So let's spend our 45 resource points and choose and equip a squad. So here's our player soldier who's got to lead this unenviable mission of clearing out the caves and it's Neilon. And Neilon cost us 12 resource points. He does though come for free with a hardy hot counter because at the beginning of each soldier turn if there is a location with an environment keyword on it we have to roll and try and beat the number that's printed on the card. If a soldier fails, they can either take a wound or a suppression. But these counters sort of negate that, so he's got one chance with his counter there. He also comes with Gung Ho, which is a nation skill, and the prerequisite is Marines only. This is a United States Marine Corps mission, so he can use that and it says, when you enter a location with a hostile, perform an attack without spending an action, which sounds great, but I've just got to remember to use it. We have to equip him with a weapon, and I've decided to give him the M2 carbine, which costs three, has a loadout of two. He has a loadout total of 12, so he's well within that with all the other things he's got. The carbine comes with six ammo counters, and at range zero, i.e. in the same location card as a hostile, he needs a six to hit, but one card away, that goes up to a nine. Has a choice of firing modes though. He can do the semi-mode, which means he can throw one die and see if he can hit, or auto throw three dice and pick the best one. And you think, ah, why not use auto all the time? Well, here we've got a reload value 
of two. When we throw our attack dice, if we throw a two or a one, we've gone a bit bonkers with the ammo and that ammo counter has been emptied. And we have to spend an action to reload. There's a bigger chance of hitting the enemy, but there's also a bigger chance of having to reload. A mission isn't a mission without grenades. So we've got the Mark II grenade. We're allowed five of them per player soldier. So we've got five. They cost one each and have a loadout of one. So with the M2 carbine, we've only got a loadout of seven. These have a range of zero, so you have to be in the same location as the hostile. They hit on a seven plus, and we can throw four dice. And each one of those is taken into account for the hits. And being a grenade, it also has a penetration of one, which means it will knock one off the cover of the hostile. And just to finish off, binoculars. I usually use these, they only cost one resource point. There's no loadout to them because you're wearing them around your neck. Because there are occasions when you can't find the location marker cards from the action deck, which you cash in and draw from the location deck. So you can use the binoculars. You throw a D10, if you throw three or more, you can pick a card from the top of that deck. So that's got me out of a jam more than once. And just before we move on, that is the player soldier's movement allowance. Location cards have an entrance cost. If the entrance cost is more than its movement allowance, we have to cash in action cards to pay the difference. And here is Nilon's cover value. The hostiles have to throw that or greater to get through the cover and hit with their attack dice to cause a wound. But yeah, with one, they're going to get through every time. But there we go. That's uh, Nilon, who's in charge of this mission to clear those caves. Let's look at the others. Next, we've got a couple of what they call non-player soldiers. They come equipped already. Everything on the card is free. So Talgorn cost eight resource points, but comes with all these bits and pieces. Incidentally, I forgot to mention, player soldiers have two actions per turn, but the actions vary for non-player soldiers and squad soldiers. But for Talgorn, he's got two actions and has two lives. He has a movement point and a cover of three, which is a bit better. And he comes with the M1 carbine. It's similar to Nilon's carbine with the same values here, but he's only got the semi mode. So he can only throw one die each time he fires it. And it comes with six ammo counters. Also included is a bayonet, which is used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is a mechanism I don't often use. Some people love it, but I'm pleased he's got a bayonet because here you can see it starts with two XP. And these are the XPs there, experience points, which are used for many things in the game. Main reason he is on the team is he's the uh, squad's corpsman. So he'll be patching up any wounds that the boys get. And for that, he'll need his first aid kit, which is here comes with four bandages, so he can patch up soldiers four times before he's out of bandages. And depending on what he rolls, lets you know how many wounds he can heal. To help him along though, he has the Corman skill, which will help him to get a good roll because it adds two to his heal roll. Anything on a card in brackets, be it a number or words, can be upgunned. If you pay an experience point, everything on that card in the brackets applies. So if we pay an experience point, he can add four for that uh, heal roll. The other non-player soldier is Williams. He has a movement of two and a cover of three again, which is really good. He has two actions, two lives, but he's our sniper. He comes with the M1903A4 scoped rifle. And as you can see, the further away you are, the better it uh, gets, which makes sense. Quite hard to use a sniper rifle up close. 
only throwing one die when we attack, which makes sense. So bolt action rifle. And like every other weapon, every time you use it, you use an action. However, for bolt weapons, if you want to use a second action to fire a second time, the player soldier has to discard an action card to do so. But as it's a powerful rifle, it does have a penetration of one, which will take one off the hostile's cover value. Also comes with the rifleman's skill, which will add one to his attack die roll, or if he upguns it, he can add two for that attack. And camouflage. When hostiles appear on the board, they will target one of our soldiers. And if Williams is targeted, he can throw a D10. If he throws eight or more, he can slip into the undergrowth and the hostile loses contact with him. So that's quite handy. And talking about uh, targeting, this is what these numbers are. And you'll see when hostiles appear, we'll draw from a bag and the number that matches the number on their card will be the soldier that the hostile targets. So that's Williams. And the last member of the team is Wiseman, who's a squad soldier. And these tend not to come with any extra equipment. And in fact, their weapon is sort of integrated into the card. He has a movement of one and a cover of one. Two actions, two lives. But at range zero, he only needs to throw a four. And at range one, a six, which is why he costs seven. He's quite expensive, but I think he'll be a good addition to the team. There we go. That's the squad. Right, I think we're ready to start. And it's been a little while since I've played Warfighter. So if there are any misplays, let me know in the comments and that'll help me and others who are interested in the game. So looking at our mission card, we've used our resource points. We've put the timer on 11. The objective is on five. And at the start of the first soldier turn, recon one location. So we'll do that in a moment but pay one extra for all retain and support costs. Mind you, as I said earlier, I don't think we'll be doing that. So we'll pop that there and we'll take the location deck and we're gonna have a look through, but to save you watching me pour over all the location cards, I'll pause the video, pick the one I want and we'll be right back. Okay, made my choice. Let me just shuffle the deck again. There we go. And the card I've chosen is Moist Jungle. A couple of reasons. It's only one entrance to get in. It's free to play, so we don't have to use an action. It has an environment role, but it's fever. And if you remember, Neilan had a hot hardy token, so that won't be of any use, but it's only three plus. You've only got to throw three or more. It's nature, it is obstructed. And that means, for instance, if we play it here, we can't fire through this card to any hostiles that are on that location. And thinking about it, we've got to take that into account for our scoped rifleman, Williams. If he stays here to fire at people further up the track, he won't be able to shoot through the jungle. So we've got to remember that. And support cards cost two or more XP to retain. The hostiles we draw isn't too bad either. So I thought this might be a good card. We'll pop that there because now we've got to draw our action cards. And looking at Nilon, we can see he's got a health of six. So that's how many action cards we draw. So let's do that. These have all been shuffled, by the way. So there's six. Pop those back, what we've got. 
Foobar. We all know what that means. Play when a hostile card is placed in or moves into your location. Gain one extra action during the next soldier turn. Okay. Hand signals. This is a covert card. That means we have to discard two action cards, but I don't think it's going to apply. This, this will po possibly be one we can discard. All soldiers can freely exchange action cards, but we've only got one player soldier, so I don't think that's going to be of much use. But this is, this is a location marker. We'll pop that there. We'll cash that in in a minute and get uh, another location card. Flanking attack, again, covert, discarding two cards. You, any soldier, this is in brackets, so for it to apply to any soldier, we have to upgun it by spending uh, an experience point. May perform a move, and you may immediately perform an attack without spending actions. Hmm. Self-sacrifice. Play when a soldier is suffering wounds. Instead, inflict the wounds on another soldier in that location. I see. And move out. You, any soldier, that's upgunned, may perform a move without spending an action. That's a handy card. So we'll pop that there. Foobar. Hand signals isn't going to be much use. Don't think that will be either. Self-sacrifice. Hmm. Okay, we'll put those there for not uh, decided yet. But we're going to cash this in and get our location card. And it is... Oh, heavy jungle. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Entrance of six. Look at that. It's only going to draw one hostile. I'm not surprised. Look at it. Doesn't look very inviting at all. And reinforcements are zero. It's free to play, but a fever of eight plus. No vehicles. Obstructed again, so you can't fire through it. You can fire into it, but not through it. Isolated. That means I think you can't fire out of it either. No vehicles. It's probably going to be a discard, that one, isn't it? So good job we've got the old binoculars. So we'll just pop these back onto the mission card. These are the duplicates of the ones on the soldier cards. So we know which location they're in. I think we're ready to start. So here we go. I think we are going to play our moist jungle and the other reason, I don't know if I mentioned it, is that the reinforcement on this card is none. So that's good. So here we go. First location. We now have to draw three points worth of hostiles for our resource total. So let me just give these another little shuffle. Right, there we go. Right, wish us luck. Two. This is, oh, these are annoying. Harassing force. There's three of them. So they're gonna use this column until we can knock them down. Place one be behind rearmost. Well, it can't go any further back than that. So they're gonna go there when we place them. They've only got a range of zero. So whoever they're targeting, if that um, soldier moves away, they'll be out of range. And to make it worse, maintain two. That means this card is gonna keep two location cards behind its targeted soldier which uh, you think that doesn't make sense. He's got a range of zero and he's keeping two back. He's not going to be out of fire. But that's the annoying thing is here. Advance the timer counter by one at the end of each soldier turn. So we've got to get rid of these because they're just annoying you all the time, harassing you. 
and you're and you're spending time trying to deal with them and uh, the old timers tick tocking away so they've got to be dealt with but that's only two points we need another point two again so we've done it but look there's six of the swines human wave dear oh law i feel a grenade coming on with these target the closest so they're going to be in here aren't they fearless no suppression for them we've just got to kill them outright so they're going there they're going to target one of these and these are the closest nobody is uh, shielding anybody else so let's see who they're targeting not a great start number three and in here I've got uh, the targeting counters. There's four of each number. So a soldier could get multiple targets. Number four. Right. So what are we doing? Well, we might as well use that foobar. Play when a hostile card is placed in or moves into your location. Well, they did, the pair of them. They should have been here. Gain one extra action during the next, ah, the next soldier turn. Well, it says next soldier turn, so I'll leave that there to remind me. I think we've got to wait until next turn. Let's see if we can get a better shot of what's going on. Hold on. So what I think we'll do is have Nilon here. Now play a soldier. Throw one of his grenades at this human wave. There's six of them. Unfortunately, Gung Ho doesn't work because it's when he enters a location with a hostile, not the other way round. We have the foobar, but that won't happen until next soldier turn. So he will use an action. He has two actions. And we're going to lob a grenade at that human wave and see if we can uh, get rid of some of them. Let's just move this. And we'll pop that there if we can. There we are. If we can get rid of these, at least there won't be any more coming up through the moist jungle because uh, reinforcements are none. Oh, and incidentally, this objective has an inactive counter on it. Nothing will happen to it until we activate it, and then we will draw the hostiles. But for the moment, we'll leave it as is. Okay, so a grenade, just to remind you. We're going to throw four dice. It's an explosion weapon, so all four dice will count if they hit. Uh, we need a seven or more with those four dice. We do get a penetration of one, which won't matter for the human wave because their cover is one. So we don't need to throw the covered dice, the D6. But we're going to throw four D10s and we're going to try and get some sevens and see if we can uh, knock them out. We can't suppress them. That fearless keyword means they've gone a bit bonkers and they're just rushing towards us regardless of uh, their injuries. So we've got to take them out. Here we go. Seven or more. That's terrible. No hits. We can't even suppress them because normally what happens is that if you get through the cover but don't hit with the attack dice, you will at least suppress them. But that is the worst grenade throw ever, Neilon. What's going on? This human wave rushing towards you has obviously put the willies up here and you've thrown it over their heads and completely missed them. What to do? We better try that again. We've only got five grenades, so we're going to use Nilon's second action and throw another grenade. My goodness. 
Does that mean we won't get past the first location? Here we go, seven or more. Come on. Oh, that's better. We've got, these bullets are tens. So we've got three tens. So we've hit, oh, let me come here. We've got three tens. So it's knocking them all askew, but I think you saw it as I threw them. Three tens, three hits, thank goodness. And we put three of these enemy killed in action counters on there. Dear, oh dear. Half of the human wave is now knocked out. They're still on this middle column though, which can do some serious damage. But Nilon is out of actions. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll use Wiseman, our squaddy. Remember, he's got two actions and he only needs to hit on a four or more. Once again, we won't need to throw the D6 for the cover because their cover is only one. So we just need a four or more. So turn that action over. Come on. Oh no! Oh dear, oh dear. Second action. Come on, Wiseman. That's better, eight. That's four hits, but there's still two of them there. Who else we got? We've got, we've got our Corman, Talgon. He's got two actions and he'll be using the M1 carbine at range zero. He'll need to throw a six. He can only throw one die. If he throws a one, he's out of ammo. Again, we don't need to throw a cover die because uh, it's only a one needed, but we need a six, come on. Let's turn his action over. Nine, get in there. One more to go. <laughs> but we've still got to deal with these. So he will use his second action. We need another six or more. Six, there we go. My goodness. Be still my beating heart. We've got six kills. That's the human wave dealt with. And because Talgon dealt the final blow, he will get the experience points of this hostile, which is, whoops, which is two. So he gets two experience points to use. He's up to four. And we have dealt with that human wave. Good grief. And this goes back in the bag, the number three. Now the only person who's got any actions left is Williams. And he's got the scoped rifle, which isn't very good at range zero. It will get through the cover because um, this time they've got a cover of two. He does have the rifleman skill, which we could upgun to add two to the die roll but he does come with a grenade. Now the problem with that is we were saving that because as he is a sort of sniper and needs to stay back to get the best shot, he has a grenade in case somebody pops up into his location. And of course his scope rifle isn't as good at range zero, so he can just lob a, a grenade at them. But if we don't deal with these, they're going to advance the timer. Okay, we've got a bit of leeway there. I think the boys want to get up there and back. They don't want to hang around. They want to get into this moist jungle here and then take stock. So even though I don't want to, I will use William's grenade to try and take at least one of them out because even though they're range zero and they are maintained two, they will move away next turn. This hostile turn, they can actually go for Wiseman number four. So if we can knock at least one of them out, 
they've got to throw a 10 to hit. So here we go. That's four dice again. For the grenade, we don't need to throw the cover die because grenades have got a penetration of one. That will take that down to one. So no matter what we throw on the D6, we'll get through. So come on, we need at least one seven. <laughs> we get one kill with the nine. Not doing too great with these uh, grenades, are we? But because we got through the cover, the other dice that didn't cause a hit will suppress the rest of those on the card. So the other two on that card, because there's three, will be suppressed. And to all intents and purposes, they are out of the game for their turn because one of their companions has been killed. So the other two are keeping their heads down. I think it was Solo Board Gamer who's just finished a playthrough of Warfighter and inspired me to do mine. It says they're eating dirt. So we could, for William's last action though, just have a go with the scoped rifle. It's not going to be very good. And yes, yeah, sorry about showing you the cards, but this is quite an awkward game to video because it spreads out with your, uh, with your squad. But here we are, just to remind you, we're going to throw... See if we can throw a nine. We mustn't throw a two, otherwise we'll um, be out of ammo. But what I might do is upgun this to see if we can knock out another one to uh, make it a bit more safer for uh, Wiseman. So we're going to upgun that rifleman skill. Anybody can pay the experience point, but uh, Williams has one. So we'll cash that in. And so he's going to get a plus two to his roll. So he needs a seven or more. Still not much of a chance. And as I say, we don't need to throw the cover die because that penetration of one from his M1903 knocks that down to one. Right, here we go. Sorry about that, just about to throw the die. And there was somebody at the door with a delivery from GMT. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Now the sun's come out, right. So if the shadows have changed, that's why I had to go and answer the door. And I've got to do some more unboxings. Right, so what do we want? We want seven or more, because we've got that plus two. Here we go. Five, plus two is seven. No, we needed nine, so it was a miss. We are out of actions. And here's the state of play. Everybody's actions are used, but nobody has been injured yet. And it is now the hostile's turn. So the first thing that happens in the hostile turn is the reinforcement draw. But as I said earlier, none on this card, so we can ignore that. Then they attack. However, they're eating dirt and one of their companions is dead, so they are doing nothing. Close range. They can't move because they're keeping their heads down. If they weren't suppressed, because of this maintain two, they would start to move this way, away from their target, which would be quite funny because as number four moves up, they'll move back the other way. So nothing happening there, but we do now remove a suppress counter. And they're ready to rock and roll next turn. Oh, just to let you know, their advance the timer counter by one, I don't think applies again because they were fully suppressed. They're not harassing anybody at the moment. They're keeping their heads down. But next turn, if we don't deal with them, they will move that mission timer forward by one at the end of our next turn. But that's the end of the hostiles turn and the mission timer will now move on its own accord. And the timer moves down to number 10. Okay, ready for the next turn. First thing we've got to do is turn over all those action counters. There we go. Next thing is to take care of this harassing force if we can. And Neilan will get an extra action this turn because of the FUBAR card. So let's see if we can sort that harassing force out and then get moving. 
All of the squad can have a, a go at this harassing force as long as they leave one action to move into the moist jungle. So we'll have Wiseman have a go first because he's only got to throw a four. He needs a two though with his cover die as they have a two cover. So pop that there. I'll have that. We've got a 10 on the cover die, which of course gets through, and a 5, which takes care of another hostile on that card. He'll keep his extra action to move. Next, I think we'll try our Corman Talgorn, who's going to be using his M1 carbine. He's going to need to throw a 6 and a 2 again for the cover. Doesn't want to throw a one though, otherwise he's out of ammo. Let's turn his action over. Oh dear, what did I say? <laughs> Don't throw a one. He's got through the cover, but all three hostiles on that card are either killed or suppressed. Because he threw a one, that ammo counter is now going to be turned over and he'll have to use an action to reload. But not this turn, because he's gonna to have to move. Okay, we'll try our player soldier, Neelan, who's going to use his free action to try and deal with that last hostile of the harassing force. He's not gonna use another grenade. He's gonna use his M2 carbine. And we'll have a go, taking a bit of a chance, at the old auto. That means we can throw Three dice, take the best one, but he will have to reload if he throws a two or a one on any of them. And once again, needs a two for the cover roll. Come on, Neelan. That'll do. This gets through. That kills the last hostile of the harassing force, but look, he's thrown a two as well. So he is out of ammo and that will get turned over as well. But Neelan does get two experience points because it was a two value hostile. He gets that as well. He can get rid of this. We can get rid of this as well because he's used his free action. He'll use his second action, will Neelan, to move into the moist jungle. If you remember, he's got a movement allowance of two, so he's fine with that. So in he goes. Talgorn is gonna move in. He's fine as well because he's got a movement of one. Uses up his last action. Williams. Now Sniper, he's got to move in because he can't stay there and shoot through that terrain card to here because it's obstructed. So he'll have to move in, but he has a movement of two as well. Action used for him. In he goes. And lastly, Wiseman has a movement of one, will use his last action. Everybody's in. The Moist Jungle. Now, Neelan has an action left and he can either reload and discard that empty ammo counter or we could discard the action cards we don't want and redraw or we could use the binoculars. I think what we'll do is, if I just take this away, is to use Neelon's last action and discard these cards, I'm certainly not going to use that one if I can help it. So we can discard that, and that, and that. So that's four cards. We have one in hand. Neelon's health is six, so we can draw another five cards. And let's hope we get a location marker. There we go. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Oh, two of them. Great. We need two more. So we can 
cash those in. In a moment, we've got ready. Pay 2 XP to play this card. May perform a discard and draw. I don't think we'll be... Hmm, maybe not. Scrounge. Support. If you remember here, we've got to pay an extra one. So we'd be paying three, discarding three action cards. So maybe not. And Snapshot. You, any soldier, may perform an attack without spending an action. So that's handy. Okay, let's cash these in and draw two locations. One, two. We've got light jungle. It's four to get in. Hostiles aren't too bad. Reinforce zero ones. Brick building. Oh, what have we got on here first? Free to play. That's good. Fever, four plus. Again, it's obstructed, so our sniper won't be able to shoot through if we use that one. This one's cheaper to get in. It's an action to play, so we can't play it this turn. Three are going to be drawn. Reinforce. One and two. Okay, at least we've got a couple. Well, nobody else needs to do anything. We've got a couple of soldiers that need to reload, Nilon and Talgorn. But apart from that, everybody's finished their move. We'll do the hostile turn. Not much is going to happen again because, first of all, reinforcement draw. None. No attacks. No close range. No removal of suppression counters, so we just advance the timer. There we are, down to nine. And once again, we will refresh the squad's action counters. There we go. So the first thing we do in the soldier turn sequence is to do any environment rolls. And if you remember, now this one has got a fever three plus on it so everyone has to pass their environment roll and that's a d10 and they all have to throw three or more this hardy counter doesn't do anything it's for hot environment which we haven't come across yet so nilon three or more he's fine just talgorn yep ten Williams, eight, and Wiseman. Don't let us down. No, 10. Right, everybody's passed, everybody's fine. First thing we're going to do, though, is reload. So Nilon is going to use an action to get a new ammo counter, as is Talgon. And now we've got to decide... If we're going to lay one of these down. I'm looking at this one. At least if uh, Williams stays where he is, he can, he can get a bit of a better shot. It's one action to play. That'll use up Nilon's actions. But everybody in that um, location will get a plus one to their cover. Three to draw, reinforce on ones and twos. Tell you what, let's do it. Let's use the action and plop this down for location number three and we'll draw our hostiles. Here we go, just move this out the way for a minute. Just in case you're not uh, clear, we need to draw up to three uh, points of hostiles. That one was worth two. So let's see what we get this time. One. So riflemen. Three of them, though. Uh, where are we? That's one. 
Oh, that's zero. That's a lone soldier. And he's got a penetration of one. Come on. Oh, three. <laughs> Dear oh law. Banzai. Oh dear, Feel it. Oh, fearless again, and an event. Don't like the sound of this. We'll pop that there for a minute. Don't think anybody's shielding anybody else, so we can go after any of those we wish. But let's draw our event card. Okay, the event cards are up here. Let's hope it's a goodie. Lost. Oh no. Pay two XP or move timer counter one space forward. Hmm. Will we have enough time if we don't do that? No, I tell you what, we'll be on the safe side. We'll pay two XP. Talgorn's got four, so he'll pay those. Thanks very much. Say the rest of the squad. Okay, let's see who these hostiles are targeting. So, we've got our bag. Who we got? The lone soldier is targeting number three. That's our sniper. The rifle men, oh, going after our player soldier, Neelan. And the Banzai hostiles. Oh, number two. They're all picking a different target. Now, this one says, Target closest. So after number two. I shouldn't have really picked that because, yeah, target closest. If they were split up, we'd only pull for the soldiers that were nearer. But they're all in the same environment, so I just picked it out the bag. And those stay there. So... They've crept up through the moist jungle to this brick building in the middle of it. And they must have been on alert, the Japanese, because as soon as they came into view of this brick building, these three hostile groups rushed out to get them. And that looks like quite a formidable force to deal with. So now they've got a chance to deal with them before the hostiles can attack. But I'm going to leave it there. You'll have to wait until the next video to see how our brave Marines fare against these hostiles that piled out of this brick building in the middle of this moist jungle. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll tell you what, I've forgotten how much fun this game is and the replayability is incredible. Even if you played this again with exactly the same squad, it would turn out different. So having great fun. I hope I'm playing it okay, because as I said at the beginning, I haven't played it for a little while. But we're back on it now. But if you did enjoy it and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Really does help. Pushing the like button of the video helps tremendously as well. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. Leave a comment. <laughs> Hope I'm doing okay. I know there's a lot of fans out there for this game. So if you want to leave a comment, please do so. I love to read them. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you very much. And just before I go, if you want to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can, you could buy the channel a coffee. And those coffees do indeed go towards helping to maintain the channel and allowing it to upload new content. If you wish to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. And just to let you know, I have changed where I do get my coffees. So make sure you use the link in a newer video if you wish to do that. And thank you. So fingers crossed for the Marines in the next video. But until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.